Distributed computing, a relatively recent development to computation that actually changes the way in which we approach a lot of problems. What was once basically impossible is now actually attainable with relative ease. In today's episode, we'll take a look at some definitions and concepts behind distributed computing and then we'll move on to some examples, including some that you can participate in. All this and more after the break. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. So, let's take distributed computing from the very top. What is it and why is it such a helpful and useful thing? Now, traditionally, computation is usually performed on one machine. That is, you have a computer, you give it input, it processes this input, and it throws out some output. This is in fact the very standard thing that basically you and I are experiencing every single day when we use our computers, our mobile phones, or whatever other computational device. Now, it's true that in our day-to-day -day lives, this is actually very much enough. But when we're talking about larger scale projects, for example, if you're doing, say, 3D graphics, if you're doing video rendering, or in fact, in the even larger scale, if you are a researcher and you're trying to crack a complicated scientific problem, chances are, in such situations, the processing power of your single computer may not be enough. A single computer may be too slow to solve a large problem. And that is where distributed computing comes in. The idea is simple. You take a large, complex task and you actually chop it up into little bits and distribute this workload over a large number of computers so that each computer only needs to chew through a small job, but all the computers are working in unison and as a result, you get back the result of your large computation in far less time. So really, conceptually, it's very simple. However, when it comes to choosing a task that is actually suitable for distributed computing, some care has to be taken. Certain tasks are actually not very suitable for distributed computing, and you can imagine such a task to be something along these lines. If you have one complicated task that you know, has to be done in a single large step, you may have difficulties actually cutting it up into little bits to actually distribute it to a large number of computers. Such a task may basically have a large number of computations, but every computation actually relies on a result of the previous computation. Once there is this sort of serial pattern involved, it is much harder to actually distribute this task. So the most suitable tasks for distributed computing are parallelizable tasks. That is, a task that may require a large number of complicated operations, but many of these operations can actually take place independently of each other. What this means then is that you take each one of these tasks and simply distribute them out. Since one task doesn't actually rely on the result of a different task, all these different tasks can then be done at the same time, without regard of the other tasks. The way this is done is simple. Basically, you have a host computer, as well as an array of computers that are going to help out with the distributed computing. The host computer is the computer in which you actually set up your task, you run your main program, and this computer has the task of dividing all the little jobs up and then distributing these tasks out to the rest of the computers. Each computer then does the processing of these little tasks and the results are sent back. The host computer then takes the results of these individual tasks and basically puts them all together to generate your final result. In fact, a lot of the time, this communication between the computers actually happen over a network. And this network is the very same type we have in our homes. Also, the array of computers that actually contribute to the results of this distributed computing operation are actually also just any old computers. And what this means is, if you have a couple of spare computers lying around, you can actually set up your own distributed computing network. And in fact, our first example today actually illustrates this point. Our first example is actually a render farm. Now, if you do 3D work yourself, or if you've watched me doing 3D work in my series called Speed Model, which you can watch, by the way, by clicking on that link, you'll know that setting up a 3D scene is fine. It can be done very quickly, and you will be able to preview and work with the scene basically in real time. However, to turn the scene from what is essentially a collection of polygons into a nice 
JPEG image that has all the nice shading effects, all the reflections and everything, it's actually a very time consuming process. This process of converting from a 3D mesh into an image is called rendering. And basically the reason why it's such a complicated task is because what is called ray tracing is performed. Ray tracing is a technique that tries to model exactly how light works in the real world. And basically this involves tracing of individual rays and modeling the behavior of actual light. For example, when a light ray hits a reflective surface, it must be reflected at the correct angle. A typical scene comprises millions of rays, and so you would expect the task to be a very complicated one. What many 3D programs do is that they don't actually render the entire image as one. Instead, what they do is they chop up the image into little squares, and each one of these squares can be rendered independently of other squares in an image. This is where the magic of distributed computing can come in. After the scene is set up by the host computer, each one of the little squares can then be distributed out into what is known as a render farm. A render farm is just a distributed computing setup that comprises multiple computers. And of course, to make things more efficient, you would want a large number of computers. But that's not absolutely necessary. Each one of these computers then handle a certain number of squares of the actual image. And that is basically distributed computing. You're offloading one complicated task to multiple computers. Now, our second example of distributed computing is a more interesting one, because this one also contains elements of crowdsourcing. What this means is you can actually participate in this project by installing a copy of the program on your computer. When you're actually not using your computer, that program can run and make use of your computer's computing power to help out in the project. In fact, the distributed computing project I'm talking about here is called Folding at Home, a research project starting off at Stanford University. Now, very much in brief, because I'm not a biologist, this project is actually trying to simulate the folding of proteins. When proteins are actually synthesized, they are basically just a long strand, but in the body, they actually sort of fold up and form a certain structure. If I understand this correctly, at present, we actually still have some difficulties in understanding this particular process, which is why we're trying to throw a lot of computation power at this problem to see if we are able to better understand this phenomenon. This is actually a very parallelizable project, which is why Folding at Home was actually created. When you download this software, it acts as a screensaver. So basically every time you're idle, the screensaver starts to run and it pulls down a particular folding operation from the folding at home servers. Your computer then tries to perform some computation and the results are returned to the server. Because many people are actually contributing to this project, the progress on it is actually a lot faster than can be done if this wasn't actually a distributed problem. In fact, according to what I've been reading online, hundreds of papers have actually been produced thanks to the results from the folding at home project. So yeah, that is a distributed computing project that you can contribute to. Personally, I think it's a great thing to do. It's a great way to make a problem that is complicated basically be solved in less time. And of course, for us as individuals, obviously it's nice to be able to donate some idle computing time to the advancement of science. So there you have it. That is basically distributed computing in a nutshell. I hope you've learned something today. I hope you know, you're interested in the Folding at Home project at the very least. But yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612TV. Hello, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget I appreciate every like, favorite and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe. For more updates outside of YouTube, do follow my official Twitter account at 0612TV. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can also check out my About Me page. Once again, thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV.